This is Joshua Tree National Park. It's about 120 miles east of Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Karen. Yes, like the meme, but spelled differently. I'm Cheddar's West Coast Division. I used my phone to navigate out here, of course. I have a mobile plan with Verizon, and according to their coverage maps, I should have 4G service not everywhere in the park, but most places, and certainly right here. But I don't. To be fair, I do get 4G service if I climb to the top of this rock, right here. This won't be surprising to most of you. You see those commercials where every company claims to have the best nationwide 4G coverage, or whatever, and then you're out somewhere and boom, no service. In a place where you should definitely have it. I'm not the most tech savvy person, but I started reading about this and I realized you don't need serious tech chops to understand what's going on here. It turns out that those maps, those annoying ones from the commercials that overpromise and underdeliver, they're not just irritating for wannabe hikers in national parks. They're actually a symptom of a much bigger problem with America's internet. I know I don't have to explain the importance of the internet to an audience that's watching this on YouTube, but I'm going to just for context. Even before the pandemic shifted countless jobs and schools to the internet, it had a vice grip on everything. Job applications, social calendars, the entirety of our work days, and all of this other stuff. Just look at this chart of internet usage by American adults, just 52% in 2000 to 93% in 2021. 85% of us carry it around in our pockets. It's that important. Which would all be well and good if our service was well and good. But it's not. First off, it's pretty slow. In the US, the Federal Communications Commission sets the standard for broadband internet, which is just a word that means fast internet. In 2015, they redefined fast as 25 megabits per second download, up from just four. If my internet were that speed, there is no chance you would be watching this video right now. Of course, not everyone needs to send video files back and forth, but still, that's slow. The second big issue is one of access. One study estimated that 42 million Americans don't even have the option to purchase broadband internet at home. And another by Microsoft suggested that even if it's supposed to be available in their neighborhoods, 120.4 million Americans still don't have internet at broadband speeds. But if you ask the FCC itself, you'll get a much rosier picture. Their data suggests that in 2020, only 14.5 million Americans lacked access to broadband internet, down from 18.1 million the year before. That's what I meant when I said the internet is supposed to be available. There's a huge discrepancy between the internet availability that the FCC says exists and what actually exists when you and I try to buy it at home. There are a few issues that contribute. For one thing, internet service providers, or ISPs, are notoriously consolidated. At least 83.3 million Americans can only access broadband through a single provider. So if their service sucks, those people are out of luck. But the main culprit brings us back to maps. I know we're pretty far down this telecom rabbit hole, but just bear with me for a little bit longer because it's about to get pretty wild. This is the FCC's official map of broadband internet accessibility. It cost $350 million as part of the 2009 American Recovery and Reinvestment Act. Basically, part of the Obama administration's plan to get the economy back on track included grants and loans for communities that lacked reliable high-speed internet. That meant finding them, and that meant making a map. So the FCC released this map in 2011, and it's been criticized pretty harshly ever since. Seriously, if you're bored at work, go down the angry 2011 think pieces about the FCC broadband map rabbit hole. It's a good time. Anyway, it's the way the FCC collects this data that has people so mad about it. First, because they use census blocks to label areas as served or not. If even one house has access to broadband internet, the whole census block counts as served. So if you live here and you don't get internet, but your neighbor way over here does, you do, in fact, have internet, according to the FCC. Secondly is Form 
477, also known as the primary reason that this map is about as reliable as those mobile coverage maps from commercials. Form 477 is what ISPs use to submit their coverage data to the FCC. Check out this wording. Fixed broadband connections are available in a census block if the provider does, or could, without an extraordinary commitment of resources, provide internet. In plain English, an ISP doesn't have to have the internet actively up and running in your neighborhood in order to tell the FCC that they do. They just have to be able to get it up and running without an extraordinary commitment of resources. So naturally, I wanted to know, what does an extraordinary commitment of resources mean? And it turns out everyone else does too. There is no actual guidance on how many resources constitute an extraordinary commitment's worth. This data collection method dates back to the Telecommunications Act of 1996. And fine, the internet wasn't nearly as important back then. Barely half of Americans used it by the year 2000. But even though our internet needs evolved during that time, the FCC's method didn't. Thus, this flawed 2011 map was born and helped government officials distribute billions of dollars of grants and loans. So in March 2020, Congress signed the Data Act, which ordered the FCC to update the maps with input not just from providers, but local governments and everyday citizens. This is the first. It's a map of mobile coverage, 4G voice and data from the four largest mobile providers. The FCC created this map using knowledge of cell tower locations and local geography to mathematically estimate coverage. So it's not perfectly accurate to what your experience will be on the ground, but it's a big first step. The FCC is currently updating its broadband map, and you can go tell them exactly what the situation is at your house right now. We'll leave that link below. But in the meantime, other interested parties have created their own maps, and they're pretty fun. This is a map that The Verge made earlier this year. Blue counties are those in which fewer than 15% of residents use the internet at broadband speed. The Verge used a huge data set that Microsoft made in partnership with GitHub. This is it. Search any county in the US and it'll show two percentages. The FCC's estimate of people who can access broadband internet and how many are actually accessing it. Let's try my county, San Francisco. The FCC says that the county is 100% broadband internet accessible. GitHub says 58%. Pretty underwhelming for the OG tech hub. So that's the story of how bad maps are exacerbating the digital divide. Everyone look up your county in that data. Tell us in the comments below and we'll see who has the biggest discrepancy between theoretical availability and actual usage. Again, I don't know how YouTubers do this. I really gotta get a lav mic. This is, well, I don't know. It looks like I'm a podcaster. And uh, of course, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, all of that stuff. Do it. Please and thank you. Ugh, whoa.